Hello and welcome to the Bearded Mystic Reacts. So we'll be looking today at a video by New Realities with Alan Steinfield and the guest is Jim Newman. I was requested to listen to one of Jim Newman's videos so this is exactly what I will be doing. So this is an interview it is 28 minutes long there's two parts to this let's see how much I can go through and maybe just get a snippet yep so let's take a look Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and this program is about the exploration of consciousness. And I've been searching and been on a global tour for people who have had a, a, a moment of awakening or non-dual experience. People call it Advaita. Uh, I'm here with Jim Newman. Hi there. Hey. And um, you, you have that kind of unique perspective of... A, a presence how would you describe what it is that that you want to communicate to people uh, well there's nothing I want to communicate to people but what's communicated is the recognition that the person mm -hmm. the individual yes is an illusion right that's what I wrote on your website the so <laughs> I, I don't understand this line there's nothing I want to communicate yet the person wants to communicate this kind of shows a subtle level of duality and it's very subtle for me i'm not understanding what he's talking about that he's the person is the illusion yeah we understand that but why are you saying that i do not want to talk about this or i do not experience this or i do not want to communicate anything well you are communicating otherwise you wouldn't be doing this interview so those are the red flags that I find with the Neo Advaita teachers. But maybe he can expand a bit more. Maybe we can get some insight. But we still, I feel like I've asked this question for so many people, but we still exist, me and you. We're people. Well, there's an apparent existence. Yeah. So the body is an appearance. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's and a there's, personality but there, and preferences. But there's nothing in it. There's nothing in the body. Right. Right. <laughs> There's nothing in the body. I don't know if I essentially agree with that. There is always something in the body, otherwise you wouldn't be alive, even for consciousness. Consciousness is also within the body as well as around the body. So, or if you want to use the advice, the word of awareness, there's awareness around and there's also awareness within. A mind, although it cannot capture awareness, it can at least understand its presence. So, yeah, this is a very interesting one. Well, I, 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 I don't know if I get that. Um, well, I don't. You don't get it? No. But we I don't get it. Well, that, that makes the three of us. The three of us don't get it. It's pretty obvious. You've had nobody, it. nobody gets it. And it's not an experience. It's not an experience. No. What is it? It's a recognition. Uh, when you say there's no one in it, what about these thoughts that are running through the head? Well, the person doesn't think. What appears is just nothing appearing. It's just what seems to be happening. So there's something seems to be happening. Apparently, and, yeah. And everybody's made a big deal about it. <laughs> well, what happens is, in this happening, yeah. there forms a center, for no reason, called an eye. Mm. And that that's when the big deal shows up. The big deal mean phenomena and religion and political... Well, the, the effort to find out the problem of what I am. When I shows up, there's a certain, there's an immediate sense of separation. The sense of I am here mm -hmm. and everything else is out there. And I need to defend myself. I need to be a certain way mm -hmm. to get happiness, joy, to and find... And to define yourself. I find am this, fulfillment. I am, yeah, right. But... Well, but, it's, a, it's a false claim. I I think he does not understand the, the reason why we use language. There's a reason why we say I. There's always an individual experiencing something. You may have a particular union with the truth or with the formless or with awareness. There may be a union, but 
you are still functioning in your body you're still functioning in the form in the manifest form that you have so i mean we're only two minutes and 30 seconds in and i can already tell that he's not really understood the nuance of language in advaita see the title of this is called the ultimate advaita teaching in my opinion i don't know whether i will call this the ultimate advaita teaching it's it's something else entirely it's a false claim because this the appearance mm -hmm. is already everything is already wholeness the appearance is already clear uh, what do you mean the appearance complete of of the being anything that's happening is an appearance okay this this is an appearance. Everything is an appearance. Everything is an appearance. See, this is true. Everything is an appearance. But that doesn't mean that the appearance isn't true. For example, when you're looking at a screen and there's images, when the images are on the screen, they are real. Yeah? Now, when the, the images disappear and only the screen is, we realize the screen was untouched by the images. That's the way you explain it. What he's talking about is there's no existence in the appearances is what he's trying to imply, which isn't true. And this is it. This, this is an appearance, yeah. And, and so there's nothing more to it than this. No. This is it. This, this, is, this, this is the totality. This is the, this is the totality, right. This is what is and isn't. It isn't. It, what is and, and isn't. It is, isn't. Mm -hmm. It is because we're obviously yeah, here. Yeah, and it's empty. I, I don't quite get because I guess I've built up such... We an, can't get it. It's not to be God. See, this is the number one thing. I'm actually with the interviewer here. Like, it's very tough to interview someone who believes in this stuff and who, who actually teaches this stuff. <sighs> I mean, there's no teaching to get. Well, how did you get your clarity then? In order for you to have understood this, to have this recognition, as he calls it, there must have been a teaching. There must have been a particular method. I'm struggling with this. I'm like the interview here who's kind of struggling. And remember, my podcast deals with non-duality and I cannot recognize this. <laughs> the recognition is not happening with me. Seriously, that's that's the thing. That's what the me is in. That's the trap of the me is it wants to know. Yeah. So it wants to understand because it's got a problem. What's the, the problem? Biggest, the biggest problem is death. But it's experienced as separation from everything. And death is... Uh, so uh, I do agree. The, the biggest um, thing that we have to go through, uh, the biggest fear, you may say, is death. I get that. I agree with him on that. Isn't that? Well, there's that, no such thing as death. There's no such thing as death. Okay, now he says there's no such thing as death. Say that to someone who's lost someone. I think that's incredibly insensitive. Yes, we know in reality we've, we've done uh, that verse in the Bhagavad Gita where we understand that. Yet, yeah, essentially, that nobody's born and nobody dies. Everyone just goes through this cycle of the appearance of birth and death. That's okay. But you got to think about how your teaching has to implement itself in the real world, in the world that we live in. And I think I understand what he's talking about. I kind of get it. But is it something that I think is beneficial for Advaitins or people who want to study non-duality? No, um, I don't think this would be the best step to take in the first instance. Well, how do you, can you say that? Well, of course, I can't say that. No one can say that. It, there just isn't any death because there never was anything that was born. Yeah, I, I, I've heard this before. I'm trying to really get what... You I, won't I, get it. Okay, so how will... But you're getting it. <laughs> See, this is the thing. When he says you won't get it, you, he's automatically actually limiting the person's understanding. So if one is talking about awareness being all expansive actually, and limitless, well, actually, in that very line that he's just said... He's actually limiting someone's awareness in understanding the message. Uh, that's, uh, that's the key thing to understand here. Oh, this is really bad. I don't get it. Nobody gets it. We're talking about unknowing. Unknowing. Absolutely. But something's speaking about that's right. that. Nothing's speaking about unknowing. 
Nothing speaking to nothing. Nothing speaking to nothing, exactly. <laughs> but I still... Th- I think the interview should become a, a, a teacher, to be honest. I mean, nothing... <laughs> the way he's just expressed that. Nothing is knowing nothing. I mean... <laughs> and the fact that Jim got so excited by that um, <laughs> is, a, is a little little strange. I mean, uh, oh, I, I get it. I, I, I don't want to mock Jim. I get what he's doing, but I don't know if it's something that I can... I would personally talk about and express in such a way. I think I'm a something. I know. I mean, I, but you don't. I mean... Well, there isn't anyone. You really feel that, but you answer to a name. I, yeah, absolutely. There's conditioning. Right, okay. In the appearance, the story stays exactly the same. There's no need for detachment. Okay. There's no need for change. There's no need for anything, actually. Mm-hmm. There's, but that's just a story, and that's not real. That's a fabrication. Well, it's real. Yeah. and unreal. The only completely unreal part of the appearance is the sense of separate self. Mm. That's the only thing that's completely unreal. Okay, that was something that I can agree with. But if we, but again, by saying something is real and unreal at the same time, but what he is, but the thing is, what he said before that just doesn't agree with that line that he's just said, which I totally agree with. But Prior to that, whatever he has said is not aligned. I think there's confusion here because what's happening is the interviewer is now asking for a bit of a nuanced understanding. And I think there's a bit of a struggle here in trying to understand it and express it without falling in the trap of what you've created as an answer. And that imbues the entire appearance with meaning and purpose that is also completely unreal. The sense of self is the illusion. Yeah. And that's what we're all walking around in the illusion of. Well, there's no we, but there might be the experience there of being a separate sense of self that's walking around. There is, because I'm not experiencing there. I'm not either. You're not either. No. You're not. When you say, I'm not, what part of the, what what does I mean that I'm not? It's just an expression. It doesn't mean anything. Okay. That is a cop-out answer. That is a, co- a cop-out answer. You cannot say that. Oh, I want us to go back a bit on this. And I want to listen to that again. I'm not. Yeah? What part of the... What, do you, what does I mean that I'm not? It's just an expression. It doesn't mean anything. It's just an expression. It doesn't mean anything. That is such a cop-out of an answer. You can't turn around and say, it's just an expression, it doesn't mean anything. It does mean something, because there is something you're putting in as I. Whatever you express always has a meaning. This is non-duality completely kind of misunderstood. I'm not going to knock his experience, but I just, I just, I'm struggling. Okay, okay. Just to kind of give a little history, did this happen? This revela- this understanding happen like all at once? Were you it's, born? it's worse than that, right? <laughs> because because it doesn't happen. But what? But but you were probably a pretty regular person before something. The appearance, yeah. There was a story. The story yeah, of there Jim. There was a story yeah. of Jim, right? Yeah. And then when wasn't there the story of Jim? Well, that's the, that's the kicker. There never was the story of Jim. The story of Jim, mm-hmm. the story of everything, mm-hmm. all time, the whole appearance, is an appearance of this. The appearance of this. So the past and the future mm-hmm. are this. This moment. What is? It's not a moment. It's this. It's this everything that appears as the past and the future. Mm-hmm. There's nothing real, exclusively real. But what is this experience? It's there is nothing real, exclusively real. Now, do you see where he's now caught? Because when you say there is nothing that is real, then is awareness real or not? Is consciousness real or not? Is simply this real or not? Because now you just kind of caught yourself in word games. There's another teacher like him, Tony Parsons, who, who I believe maybe either Jim has spent time with him or another 
you know, Neo Advaita teacher. But this is where I think he's caught out, in my opinion. It's not. It's not an experience. But when I'm having. A because when you talk about an experience, you're talking about somebody having something. Yeah. And this is about unknowing. Unknowing. I'm really. Don't, I don't really. And you say you don't get it either. Well, you can't. Well, how could anybody get unknowing? What you're saying I is I don't get it. Meaning I don't know unknowing. Well, of course you don't. But you say unknowing, unknowing, unknowing. So knowing is a trap. Well, knowing. A, a phenomenon. Knowing is 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 a need of me to know. Because it thinks through knowing it can control its life and it can get to what it's looking for. Mm. And unknowing, there's no control. Well, the, the, the reality is, is that there never was control. There is no control. Mm. The me is, an, is, is simply a reaction. Mm. It's not personal. Mm. What, what do you think, if you can use the word, of all the religions and philosophies and political parties that are based around this other idea. I mean, what Which you, other idea? That there's something happening here, that there's something real, that there's something can be known. Yeah. What, what do you, what do you um, say about that? Are they, is that just... Well, when you talk about religion, you're talking yeah. about hope. Yeah. Basically. Hope. Yeah. And the me, the separate sense of self, lives in a world of hope. The separate sense, the yeah. false sense, That's the right. part that doesn't really exist. That's right. Even spiritual, even spirituality. Then you could say that. Is Absolutely, a, 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 spiritual materialism. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, he didn't say that, did he? Like, uh, <laughs> I was actually just speechless for the whole time he was speaking. It. It was. There is a lack of understanding, and. Ah. Oh, yeah. Can someone explain this to me? You know, hit me a comment. Let me know what he's talking about. Absolutely. Another form of hope. Absolutely. It's an oh, yeah. So spirituality is just another form of hope. Hope in what? I mean, the fact is, spirituality, and I wouldn't even say religion, is about hope. I would say they are practices in which you try to attain whatever the end goal is for that religion or spiritual path that you take so i don't think there's hope in that you will achieve it i can understand maybe in some religions that may be the case but i think there is the understanding that you will want to get to where you want to want to be i don't think it's about hope i, I think if you said that to someone, I think they would they'd be quite offended. Another form of getting what I think I want. Chakras and mantras and the whole thing, meditation. Yeah. White, even rice. Even, white rice. <laughs> 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 but even meditation. Absolutely. So you don't do any of that? Well, meditation might happen. You could actually say that everything is now meditation. Uh. But nobody's looking for anything. When you realize that you didn't... I didn't realize it. When you didn't... Whenever... Oh, uh, I didn't realize it. See, this is why... I mean, the interviewer is doing an actual brilliant job, I must say. Because it's hard to word your question around someone that says, I never had a realization. Well, why are you teaching then? Why are you doing videos if you've not had a realization? Obviously, there was a realization that occurred. This is how you catch them out. I mean, you can't... Uh, what he's talking about is complete nonsense. When the unknowing... Well, what you're doing, what yeah. happens, and this is the difficulty, is the impersonal is then expressed or tried to be expressed as a person or right. personally. And it uh, just the whole thing breaks down at that point. So it never happened because nothing happens. This mm -hmm. is nothing happening. This moment is this, nothing happening. It's not a moment. A moment uh, it feels to me like an object right. that's narrow. Right. And this isn't an object that's narrow. It's anything and everything that can possibly happen. And that's including uh -huh. the separate sense of self. This. So I, I understand what he's talking about at the moment. I kind of understand it intellectually what he's talking about. But and how it can be seen as a narrow f time frame. However, to really be in 
the now during meditation there is it is expansive it's not as narrow as you think but I understand what he's talking about that to be in the present moment you have to continuously try to be in the present moment and that is more like a an effort or there's a uh, there's an expectation you're still living in the future or in the past recalling whether you were in the present moment I get it but I don't know if I would have framed it the way Jim did let's see what question my friend asks here it's gonna be fun narrow right and this isn't an object that's narrow it's anything and everything that can possibly happen and that's including uh -huh. the separate sense of self this this yeah, what is I, I, I'm, I, I'm almost getting what you're saying I mean mm. because it's a shift from how we've been thinking and identifying with the world to realize what we've always wanted and I've heard you say that is this y yeah and it, the Yes and no. Now, the separate sense of self has no idea what unknowing or what this is. Okay. Right? Yeah. So it doesn't really want this. It doesn't want this. No. But it... It, it will it, fight the entire way through. It never hears this message. It hates this message. It doesn't want to have anything to do with this message because... It if it's unreal, or real and unreal, why would he hate the message? The, do you see the absurdity in what he's talking about the, the absurdity in what he's saying is that that can hate because it denies the reality of a separate sense of I right and so the separate sense of I mm, will do anything even because I think it knows it's false I have that impression as well, that somewhere, somewhere its struggle mm. has something also to do with the recognition that it doesn't have any stability. Mm. Would you say it's, I mean, just as a metaphor, it's like thinking we are, when we're using our computer, we're the computer, sort of, like, like that kind of, like, you know, there's something... No, I'm, I'm defining it. It's not that. Well, <laughs> what's being expressed is really inexpressible because it's, it's, it contains... <laughs> I'm with the guy. I mean, the the problem with the interviewer is that he's going to be catching himself in the neo advaitin trap and realize that he's just going to be knocked off his pedestal for framing a question in that way uh, or expressing what he thinks he understands. Ah. <laughs> oh, dear. Thing. No, I'm, I'm defining it. It's not that. Well, <laughs> what's being expressed is really inexpressible because it's, it's, it contains everything that could be expressed. Mm. So there's no way to get outside of it to point to it. You had a comment about a lot of these Advaita teachers call themselves Advaita. They still think there's something to do. Well, I don't know. I can't talk about any Advaita okay. teacher. I can't say what they, where they are or what they're doing. What I can say is yeah. if someone suggests that someone can find what, the, what is... Yeah. Then that's duality. So, you because, so this is where I'm going to say, Jim, you are both right and wrong. And the reason why you're right is I understand there is, a, there is duality. Yes, you do have to find awareness in order to understand that awareness only is, or consciousness only is, or the formless only is. I get it. I understand that. But at the same time, you have to understand that it's through duality that you understand non-duality or that you come to the recognition of non-duality you need duality to turn around and say there isn't duality or that teachers should not be using duality I think you're missing Advaita Vedanta completely I, I want to go back maybe I've missed something I wanted to express so let me just go back What's being expressed is really inexpressible because it's, it's, it contains everything that could be expressed. Mm. So there's no way to get outside of it to point to it. You had a comment about a lot of these Advaita teachers call themselves Advaita. They still think there's something to do. Well, I don't know. I can't talk about any Advaita teacher. Okay. I can't say what they, where they are or what they're doing. What I can say is yeah. 
if someone suggests that someone can find what the what is, yeah, then that's duality. Hmm. So you because can't... they got to talk about finding something because otherwise, how are you going to express it to people that want to have this wisdom or knowledge? Of course, you have to. I think the the Vaita teachers are not wrong when they do this. In fact, what and I'll probably talk about this in the end about what Neo Advaita really does to people and why it's so why it's so appealing and yet so dangerous at the same time. If I remember, uh, otherwise I may do a video about it later. Because what they're saying is that there's a real person mm-hmm. that has free will and choice that can find something that's separate from them called non-duality or wholeness. Mm. And that just doesn't make any sense. But does anyone else talk about what you're talking about? Yeah, there, there are a couple of people. Who, who, who do you like? I Tony mean, Parsons is a oh, person. Oh, Tony Parsons? Mm. Okay, I've never met him. but mm. Okay, there we go. We got the answer. I didn't know this. This is actually my first reaction to the video. And there we have the answer. There it is revealed that it is Tony Parsons that speaks of this. And Jim has been inspired by t- Tony Parsons. So, uh, the same issues I'm having with Tony Parsons in the past about his understanding of non-duality, I'm now having with Jim here. Jim, you really need to study Advaita properly. I think you need a real lineage. Well, not even a lineage, but go to some teachers who can describe what you're not understanding. Yeah, but yeah. Um, but again, we'll, we'll listen to what Jim has to say. i mm. heard good things about him. Mm. Did that sort of connect you to um, this awareness? Absolutely. Being with Tony and it, it Nobody's connected with an awareness. Something stops. Uh-huh. That no- Nobody is connected in awareness. I get it because, yes, you're talking that there's only awareness. But do you see that there's always a a small smirk in Jim's expression. In my opinion, what that is showing is that he kind of knows where he's kind of speaking nonsense. <sighs> oh. But yeah, th- this is, this is, th- these are my red flags already where I can say that Jim, maybe, a, you know, a genuine person, a nice guy, I don't know him. I've not, I didn't do any research about him uh, previously, like what he's like as a as a teacher. But all I can say is that right now, I don't really agree with him on a lot of things. But let me continue. Oh, Tony Parsons. Parsons? Mm. Okay, I've never met him, but mm. I've heard good things about him. Mm. Did that sort of connect you to? Um, this awareness? Absolutely. Being with Tony and it, Parsons? It, nobody's connected with an awareness. Something stops uh-huh. that never happened. <laughs> that the separate so sense of I. <laughs> Something stops that never happened. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Something stops that never happened. Do you see the issue with that? Something stops that never happened. Well, something has to be happening for it to stop. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Jim, I don't know if I can last 28 minutes of this. Let's see. I'm just loving the fact that the interviewer keeps laughing as well. I mean, (laughs) what else can you do? For me, the interviewer is trapped in this. But yeah, let's see. Dies. Mm, It dies. Yeah, it's recognized as never having been. So it doesn't really die even. Mm -hmm. But you do have a personal life, you have a home, you have a friends. You have You're mixing the two. So okay. on that level, no, I don't. There is no one here that has anything. So I'm mixing the two. I'm mixing the false sense of self with the true... With the story. With the story. So yeah. you so still have a story. That there, is, there is a story. Yeah. There's nothing here that has anything. The tr- would you say it's the true part that has nothing? No, there's no, no different parts. Mm. But the story you're saying of the I... So if there's, <laughs> so this is my thing here. So if there isn't a story, if there's no parts, then why are you saying there's a story? Even by saying there's a story and there's awareness or simply this, there are parts. 
you're cr you've created the part there you've you've created a duality do you see how uh, you can catch all this out i mean and i i consider myself still a novice in advaita vedanta and even as a novice i can see that there are issues with what he's saying so I dare to think what the experts are thinking. I of the relationships of your home, it's it's a fabricate. It 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 doesn't exist. It's not real. It's real and unreal. Right. It's real because we fabricate it to be real. No, no it depends on what you're talking about. If you talk okay. about time, yeah, time is an appearance. Okay. If you talk about your home, uh -huh. that's a thought that you're having now. It's an appearance. It's just what arises. It's just what happens. Mm doesn't require a separate sense of self for that to happen. For so when there's pain in the body, is there not a separate sense of self? I mean, if I have pain in my body, yes, I can be in awareness, but the body's still going to feel pain. So even though, yes, the true I never feels pain, but the I that is located in the body, that is localized in the body, is going to feel pain. Uh, this is where you see the the lack of clarity in the teaching of Neo Advaita. This is a good example of how to catch people out in, when they're teaching Neo Advaita. For that to appear. So you just live moment to moment unknowing. No one lives moment to moment. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm trying to get it. I know, but you can't. I know. You're That's the that point. Yeah, yeah. That's the point. It's too free. It's too anarchy. It's too everything to be gotten. It is. Yeah. It's it is radical. It's absolutely radical. It's it's very rare actually. It it is rare, but imagine if everyone had that realization. I mean, nobody has it, and that's just an imagine. I hear that a lot actually. That that's just an imagination of the separate sense of self, right. of what it thinks it really has an effect on in this existence, on this appearance. Mm. It doesn't have much of an effect. It's not doing anything. It's completely and utterly powerless. It's a reaction to a reaction to a reaction to a reaction to a reaction. What about the body, okay? Yeah, there is a body. There is a body. It's just a body. It's a body. But yeah. the unknowing that is, 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 is it part of the body? No. It's not. The body is the same thing as the, as the curtain or right. the chair. It's just an appearance. But it's a vehicle for no, it's expression. Not. It's not going anywhere. This isn't going anywhere. <laughs> But, but why are we here? This isn't going anywhere. Um, what? Oh. I mean, this is so bad, yet it's so addicting to continue watching, in my opinion. You know what I mean? So why do you, or like you're saying we're there's probably no not why. here? There's no why. We're just here. There's no why. And there's no we. But there is what appears. There, this appears. This is this appearance, yeah. This appearance. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. No, because I think we, if there was a we, we need to hear it. Because this mm. whole sense of this identity, <laughs> me, my. If there was a we, we need to hear it. <laughs> no, there is a we, hence we are doing this, you're doing this interview and I'm watching. There is a collective that is doing this, so... Oh, okay. Interesting. I, this is freedom. Yeah. yeah, because it's done such harm in the world. My religion, my country, my, you know, my, and, and you have to be part of m what my separateness is or mm. else that part gets destroyed. Mm. I mean, and you're saying something what people have always known, I think. What, what the, what the it's, it's not known. Right. But it has been expressed before. It's not a new message. Mm. It's always been there. Is there a way for people to really get... I mean, I guess you're just saying... If there, if there were a way, yeah. then there would be separation. Mm. So it is sort of what the Tao is saying. The Tao that can be said is not the true Tao. That's but one they way. said that. They've said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he's now just knocked Taoism. I mean... <sighs> He may be laughing, but I'm laughing at him. I mean, not with him. I'm laughing at him. 
he just basically did not understand that line. Oh, I feel sorry for the interviewer. <laughs> they're, saying, they're not saying what it is, they're just saying what it is. Well, you not. can't say what it is. But you can point. You can point to it. Mm. But you, you can't say what it is. Because if you say it, you're separate. Well, it's just inexpressible. I don't know. It it's like everything. It. But it is, that doesn't make it special. Right. But, but I have to say, and you might appreciate it, it sounds like the Abbott and Costello routine. Who's on yeah, first? it is a little, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> who's on first? That's right, yeah. Abbott, you want to be the manager of the baseball team? Yes. You know the guy's names? Well, I should. Well, now you tell me the guy's names on the baseball I team. I say, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. You ain't saying nothing to me yet. Go ahead and tell me. <laughs> I'm telling him. You said nothing yet. Go ahead and tell me. Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know. Is on third. You know the guy's I'll... names on the baseball team. Yes. Well, go ahead. Who's on first? Yes. I mean the guy's name. Who? The guy playing first. Who? The guy playing first base. Who? That that kind of is explaining what Jim is doing in a very real way. Let's forward it. Okay. Tell me. That's it. That's who. <laughs> I'm asking you. What's the guy's name on first oh, base? Oh no. What's on second? <laughs> But I, I think the more you speak <laughs> from, from some, because you're speaking from an aware, or what's being spoken is from an awareness of, of something, of unknowing. I know, I'm just, I'm just, it's just silly. <laughs> well, it's just, it's not an awareness. I know, it's not an awareness, but it's... It's, un it's not an awareness. Oh, I've gone People, back, maybe uh, that's... Well, there's nothing... It's not an awareness. I mean, this is where I I don't agree. Oh, there's so much wrong with this, isn't there? I'm just, it's just silly. <laughs> well, it's just, it's not an awareness. I know, it's not an awareness, but it's... It's unknowing. It's unknowing. So yeah. we can just start with unknowing. Well, there's nowhere to go then. Okay. <laughs> That's the whole end of it. Uh-huh. It's Which, what never happened, unknowing. It never happened. How can it end? How can it end? Ah, oh. so much wrong with this. And that, but there was a moment where I, I, I said that I asked you before. There was a moment where a boom, unknowing, was realized by some, something's realizing unknowing. For me, if you say realization, you're talking about an experience. Okay. And an experience is in time. Okay. And so this is the end of the story. I'm talking about the end of the story. I'm talking about the end of time. The end of time. As, as real, exclusively real. How, how do we live that way? Do well, we... nobody does. But how could... How... No, nobody does it. We... It's not an action. It's not a doing. It's a being? Nobody's being it. You could say being, <laughs> but not as an activity. This is being. All there is is being. Mm. All there is is being. Mm. So, but did, but in but there was something that shifted. Let's call it that. Yeah. From the identity of the false self to apparently, apparently, mm. right? Because once you're there, you realize that whole thing was just ridiculous. Mm. It never existed. Mm. Was there a physiological in the body? Was there a different? Sensations. The story of Jim yeah. was 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 sort of was sort of intense, a, an intense seeker. An intense secret. He, seeker, seeker. Seeker. You were so, an intense seeker. So he was trying really hard, <laughs> uh -huh. which created a lot of tension. So what I really like is that the uh, the interviewer says it's a secret. <laughs> I can I can understand why he says that. I get it. Because Jim has been so elusive in his response, that's going to happen. I mean, oh. And that falls away, and there's no, no need to find anything. Was there a moment when the story of Jim stopped? Yes and no. So it's such a... It, the separate sense of self thinks mm -hmm. that this, this end of itself would be an enormous special happening mm -hmm. and that it's going to get something enormous and special through that happening it, it does that because it feels like there's something wrong with it uh -huh. so it uh, i'm gonna have to stop there for me this was too much uh i 
uh, Jim on this video comes across, you know, a nice gentleman, nothing wrong with that. But there are some problems with Neo Advaita. This is called Neo Advaita when they say, when they say things like there's no teaching, there's no one experiencing anything, there's no being, there's no this, no that, no teaching, no spiritual teacher. All these things are very nice to say from the absolute point of view of awareness. It makes sense. But when you're actually dealing with people, you cannot say that. that this is my experience. You have to talk to people. You have to express it in their language for them to understand. Even though you may understand fundamentally that there is only awareness. Now he says there's no such thing as awareness. I'm confused on what he means by this and therefore confused by what he really has experienced. Uh, that's the challenge. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think the interview did a great job in asking questions in the best way they could. I mean, it was... It's tough, uh, f tough to do, uh, but for me, I think that's the greatest challenge that he was going to have. Uh, so, yeah, really, I have to end it with there, but I, w I want to speak a bit more about the Neo Advaita teaching and, and why it's problematic a bit more. The danger about it is that you can get into this feeling, and it is a feeling, that you have already got it. And this is what happens when I think people who follow Tony Parsons or Jim, they are just going to feel like they've got it. But there is actually a shift that does happen. In the beginning, I mean, there is always progress to understand this. You can get it in the moment and then it can subside away. Because even if you say, well, the mind doesn't exist, well, the mind is still going to function. By saying the mind is real and unreal doesn't help the mind is real while you're in the body let's not deny that it's unreal in the absolute point of view but it's real while you're there so the real advice in teaching would be to understand that yes although everything is an appearance it is real while you are localized in a body or localized in a particular form so for me, this is where Jim's teaching misses the boat and misses the true nature of the of the teaching of Advaita. So I would not call what Jim is talking about the ultimate Advaita teaching. I think that is a complete fabrication of a title. And I, I will also add that his simply this line also misses the point I get where he's pointing to, but there's a real reason why there's Advaita says not to. Yeah, there's a reason why it's translated as that. It's to show that there is no duality, but you need duality or two to prove there is not two uh, in a way, in a very strange way. So for me, the danger is that people will just instantly think they've got it, they've got the teaching, and then they're going to start up their own webinars and start their own retreats and start their own meetings in my opinion if there is no us there's no story why are you doing all this yeah so or why is there someone writing a book why are you doing zoom sessions why are you doing that if there's no story no person no if it's all an appearance so for me i think this misses the mark because it's a, a neo advaitin teaching. But uh, all the best to Jim with your understanding. I, I hope that maybe we can have a conversation about this. So this is my reaction to Jim Newman's ultimate Advaita teaching. Uh, and if you like this video, please like it. Please subscribe to the channel. Please comment. Let me know what other reaction videos you would like me to react to i'll be more than happy to do that i do have a podcast that is uploaded every sunday you can even watch the video version on my youtube channel but i'm also on other podcast streaming platforms 
And if you would like to support the Bearded Mystic podcast, you can do so by signing up to my Patreon page or whichever way you would like to help me with the cost of having this podcast and and this channel. So thank you very much for listening. Take care. And I'll end with the Shanti Mantra that I normally do. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Peace, Peace, Peace. Namaste.